Okay, let's work pathways problem 7.49 from chapter 7. We're given four different atomic orbital designations, and we want to know how many, what quantity of different atomic orbitals can possibly have the designations that we're given. Okay, uh, now remember these atomic orbitals are. Um, kind of like homes or, or addresses where we can put our electrons, okay? And we build from um, inner core shell electrons towards valence electrons. And as we do that, um, the, um, the orbitals change, or the addresses that we give them will change. And those electrons will tend to get further and further, on average, from the nucleus, okay? So 1s is very close to the nucleus, whereas 4d is much further the nucleus, okay? Um, now, a related topic to this that will help us figure out how many atomic orbitals we are allowed to have are these quantum numbers. And these things are really kind of interchangeable. It's just a different way to explain the same thing, more or less. We learn about assigning these quantum numbers in this chapter, of which there are four, okay? The first one is the principal quantum number. It's given the symbol uppercase N. These numbers which are out in front, like 1, 4, 3, that's the principal quantum number. They take on integer values, starting at 1. The second one is the angular momentum quantum number. This is given the symbol L. Here I made it a nice cursive L, which is pretty typical. I think your book might just use L, though. Now, this angular momentum quantum number, ultimately, what number we get for this, it's going to determine the shape of the atomic orbital. So we're also learning about S-type orbitals, P-type orbitals, D, F, so on and so forth, right? This angular momentum quantum number tells you which orbital you got, all right? We'll see that here hopefully in a second. Now, what rules can we use to assign the angular momentum quantum number, okay, or the address for this particular case? Well, the rule is, is that you're allowed to assign integer values for the angular momentum number starting at zero and going all the way to n minus one. So if the principal number n is, is three, the values for the angular momentum quantum number I could possibly assign, zero would be okay, one would be okay, and two would be okay. Those are the integers. But I can't go to three because I'm only allowed to go to n minus one. And n is three, n minus one is two. So zero, one, and two are allowed. But that's it, okay? So the angular momentum number is an integer starting at zero, going all the way to n, the principal number minus one. This one determines which type of orbital you've got, okay? For instance, if the angular momentum number is zero, you've got an S-type. If the angular momentum is 1, you've got a P-type. If it's 2, you've got a D-type. And if L ends up being 3, which was disallowed in this last example case, but sometimes it's allowed, right? That's an F-type. So the L tells you directly what type, what shape of orbital you're dealing with, okay? So that's useful information. It's a link between these concepts, which Sometimes it may seem disconnected, but they're really not. Now, after we assign an L value, we can also assign a magnetic quantum number, given the symbol M subscript L. This is my magnetic quantum number. The rule for that is I can assign integer values from negative L all the way up to positive L, including zero. So from negative L to positive L, including zero. This one determines which type of P, D, or F orbital that I'm dealing with. So remember for the P atomic orbitals, those are the ones that were dumbbell shaped. There were three of them. One of them was in the plane of the blackboard this way. The other one was in the plane of the blackboard this way. And lastly, we had another dumbbell shaped that was in and out of the plane of the blackboard. I can't draw that one front to back, right? So there were three p orbitals that we could possibly talk about. Now, so how is this consistent with the assignment of these quantum numbers? Well, 
let's think about this for a second, okay? For the p-type atomic orbital, what is L equal to? Isn't it equal to 1? So if that's the case, what are my allowed magnetic quantum numbers? Well, I could have minus 1, I could have 0, and I could have positive 1. Because I'm following the rule, I can go from negative 1 to positive 1. If L is 1, these are my options. Well, isn't that three possibilities? And sure enough, we've got three p-type orbitals, right? All of them are dumbbell shaped, but they're just in different planes, basically, okay? So again, we see consistency here. Now, the last quantum number is known as the magnetic spin quantum number. And this one's pretty easy. It can only take two values, always. Either negative one-half or positive one-half, okay? has to do with the spin on the electron. And generally speaking, when we put electrons into orbitals, the first one might be negative one-half, the second one positive one-half, or, or vice versa, okay? Um, but the, the electrons will take on different uh, magnetic spin quantum numbers. And the consequence of this is this is why we can only put uh, two electrons into each orbital, um, because uh, Electrons are all, all have, have, they have to have a unique set of four quantum numbers. They, they can't duplicate their quantum numbers. Um, so because of that, we can only assign the negative one-half and, and plus one-half for any one orbital, um, and, and that basically limits uh, two electrons per orbital. But nonetheless, let's get back to the problem, okay? How many atomic orbitals can have these designations possible? So let's first talking about the 1s. So the principle in the 1s, the principal number is n equals 1, okay? So what is our L value then if we follow our rule? Well, the rule for that 0 to n minus 1, well, n is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So it seems like my only option is L equals 0 when n is equal to 1. So if that's the case then, what's the possible values for my n? sub L. Well, it looks like I can go from negative L to positive L. Well, L is zero, so I guess my only option there is zero as well. Now, for the spin quantum number, I can have plus one-half and minus one-half, so I can put two electrons into this orbital, but it looks like right now I only have one possibility for this 1s orbital. I've only got an S-type orbital and quantity one of them. So I've got one. Now what about 4D? Here the situation is very, very different. Because N is equal to what? 4. So what are my possible values for L as a result of this? Okay, well, what's the rule for L? I can go from 0 to N minus 1. So 0 is always a possibility. 1 2, 3 is also a possibility. Now, I'm dealing with which orbitals? D orbitals. So remember, 0, if L is 0, it's the uh, S. If L is 1, it's the P. If it's 2, it's the D. And if it's 3, it's the F. I'm talking specifically about the case here where L is equal to 2, because I specified a D-type orbital here, okay? Now, if that's the case, and I'm talking about a D-type orbital, what about my magnetic quantum number, M sub L? Remember, this one could be negative L to positive L. Well, it looks like minus, if L is 2, Minus 2 is a possibility, minus 1 is a possibility, 0 is a possibility, plus 1 is possible, as is plus 2, because I'm allowed to go from negative L to positive L. So if I specify D, I'm saying L is equal to 2, and these are all my possible um, orbitals for D type, or, or L equals 2. Right? So as a consequence of this, it looks like there are 5 distinct D-type orbitals that I can assign electrons into for the 4D level. All right, what about the 3P? Well, clearly, my primary number is 3. Let's think about what my L possibilities are. Okay, well, if 
If the primary is 3, again, I go from 0 to n minus 1. So 1, 2, all these are allowed. All right? And earlier, we said that the 0 is the S, the 1 is the P type, and the 2 is the D type. So all these would be possible in the N equals 3 level. But we're specifying specifically the P type, where L is equal to 1. If that's the case, then what are my possible avenues for m sub l? Well, again, it's minus l to plus sub l. So it looks like minus 1 works, 0 works because it's inclusive of 0, right? And plus 1 works. So if l is a p-type orbital, or 1, there are three possible orbitals that my electrons can um, exist in, in the 3p level. And then lastly, we have n equals 3. Now this one's different because notice they just give us, what, the principal number. Okay, so n is equal to 3, so they want us to consider all possibilities when n is equal to 3, or the principal uh, quantum number is 3. So what about L in this case then? Well, let's see. Boy, that, that could probably take on several different values. Again, the rule is that we start at zero. We go to integer values like one, two, so on, and so forth. And we keep going until we get to n minus one. Uh, n is three, minus one is two. So I stop at two, okay? Again, that corresponds to the S, the P, and the D type orbitals that we've been considering here. The m sub l, my magnetic spin number, now that gets a little bit more complicated because if I want to consider all of my possibilities for n equals 3, you know, I really need to think about you know, everything. You know, I've got to think about my s, my p, and my d. Okay, so if l was s, right, the only possibility would be m sub l being 0, that would be my, my s-type orbital, right? There's only one of them. Now, if l was 1, well, then I could have a minus 1, a 0, and a plus 1. These would all be my p-type orbitals when l was equal to 1. So there's actually three possibilities there. But I'm not finished because, you know, potentially my l could be 2, and if if that's the case, then I could have a minus 2, a minus 1, a 0, a plus 1, and a plus 2. So there's actually 5 there, and those would be my d-type orbitals. So what I need to do is add up all of these. There's 1s, 3 of these, that makes 4, and then 5 more. So if I sum them all up, it looks like there's 9 possible orbitals for when the primary quantum number is 3 or n equals 3, okay? So I hope that this was useful for you to see the links between assigning the quantum numbers and the SBPDF notation. Um, I think that that, you know, understanding that, it's not terribly difficult. You just have to get yourself familiar with it. But understanding that could really pay off on homeworks or an exam. Um, it would be really easy to ask you, you know, what type of orbital SPDF is it when the angular momentum uh, L equals 2 or something like that, all right? And that will be a pretty easy question as long as you've um, you know, addressed this content knowledge and um, you kind of understand how this works, okay? But this is how many atomic orbitals um, are allowed to have these definitions.